All right, all right, all right. Hey YouTube, I'm Lucky, and in today's video, I'm gonna be answering a burning question that's been asked in the comments below as I've been diving into more Witch Queen questions and has been asked on my live stream, which is what weapons should I bring into the Witch Queen? What weapons should I have equipped on my character? And just as a quick PSA before we dive into any of this, make sure you understand that the servers are gonna go down like a day beforehand. Pay attention to the time when they go down and put on your best weapons. Whether you agree or disagree with my list here, put on your best weapons on the character that you want to play for day one of the Witch Queen because the third party apps can sometimes go down. It can be a disaster on day one. I mean, fingers crossed that day one is gonna be really good this time around. Bungie seems to be on a good trend where they're doing things better, but you never know, right? So make sure you have the best weapons on your character because the third party apps might be down. And if they are, when you log into the game, you're gonna to have to log into all your different characters, load into the tower, drop stuff off, go back and forth picking stuff up and it's just tedious and it's not fun i mean you want to load into that new juicy content immediately so make sure you have the best weapons for pve on your character ready to go as soon as uh, the day before so that way you can jump into witch queen as soon as possible and obviously this list before i dive into this this list is going to change or i'm going to use different weapons as i get them right like when i get the glaive i'm gonna be using the glaive right now i'm gonna be using all the other new weapons trying them out here and there but remember you're at 1350 power and you're gonna have to level up and you're gonna have to beat the nightfalls and it's gonna be really difficult content, right? So when you have to do that difficult content, you're probably not gonna be able to use that weird auto rifle that you got dropped that has that new perk that you don't quite understand, right? You're gonna have to use that strong auto rifle that you have, that god roll that you have, so that way you can efficiently run through that lost sector or efficiently beat that nightfall, etc. right? And so that's why I'm making this list because you're gonna have to use the majority of these weapons at the start leading into the raid. You may get a few weapons to drop for you, but the likelihood of those being god rolls is so extremely slim. So the weapons that you have right now are probably the weapons you're going to use from now, from the launch of Witch Queen, all the way up until the raid, except maybe just a few that you find, right? So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. With the kinetic slot, I got Witherward here. This thing is such a workhorse. I mean, if you haven't been using this in PV already, most of you already have. Use this thing. It's so good. Uh, clearing ads, Killing Majors, you name it, the Wither Horde is just an amazing exotic, definitely worth having uh, on your character for day one of Witch Queen. The Succession with Reconstruction Vorpal, such a strong roll, the god roll of this thing. Uh, we've got magazine perks to go along with it, makes it so nice. This thing is a beast, definitely worth having, especially if you need to keep your distance. If you're doing a Nightfall, you're extremely underleveled, keeping your distance is going to be important. Uh, succession will help with that obviously long range sniper the arbalist if there are any anti-barrier champions they're going to get absolutely smoked by the arbalist the arbalist is so good after it got anti-barrier added to it definitely worth keeping on that this one is a little more iffy like i said we don't know how good this is going to be i did put this on the other list of top 10 exotics that will get buffed the bad juju it's getting a plus 10 percent pulse rifle buff and it's getting a plus 40 percent increase of damage to red bar enemies it could be really good at, at mowing down ads you wouldn't have to reload you'd get super energy back it could be a string of curses, etc. Could be really good. So I'm keeping it on there optimistically. Next up, we'll go to the ignition code. This thing is important. If you have one of these, put this on your character. Make sure you're using this. Slide shot blinding will come in clutch. Trust me. I will for sure be using this. I will could almost guarantee I will be using this in the Witch Queen raid no matter what. This thing is a one of one. There's really no other grenade launcher out there that can do what this can do in terms of blinding gigantic piles of enemies such so much utility from this this is easily one of my favorite weapons and my personal secret to beating any grandmaster out there like if i'm struggling in a grandmaster slap this bad boy on blind the ads suddenly it gets so much easier because my enemies my my teammates aren't getting shot at by the enemies rather that's why this thing is so good easily one of the best next up the extraordinary edition just to have an smg on there's going to be anti-barrier smg anti-barrier auto rifle if i need to i'll use this for the anti-barrier and then I threw the Huckleberry in there as well. Same thing with the Bad Juju. It's sort of just an optimistic uh, exotic that I think could be really good for ad clear. I hope the Huckleberry is really good. It may not be, though. I've been wanting the Huckleberry to be meta for a long time now. We'll see. Moving on to the next one, we have the Stochastic Variable with Feeding Frenzy Multi-Kill Clip. This thing is a beast. Great damage output. Uh, clears adds nicely. Definitely worth having on your character. The Truth Teller, we got an auto-loading blinding. This will work in a similar fashion to the Ignition Code. Except the only difference is the slide shot is not slide shot is uh, way better than auto loading, and so the auto loading is decent though. If you have this one, if you don't have the slide shot one, you can use this one. So work just as well. Let's throw this bad boy on, and pair that with a little. Uh, we'll put something like bad juju in here, perhaps, and then we've got even reads regret. You know, we got a bunch of different options here. 
Moving on to the next part, we got the Summoner. This would again be for anti-barrier. Um, having a nice overflow magazine is nice. That way you can, in one magazine, for sure, take down the barrier shield, stun the champion, etc. Moving on, we have the Trinity Ghoul. I am extremely optimistic with the Trinity Ghoul. I would be willing to bet that this Trinity Ghoul could be the best ad clear weapon of the Witch Queen and could be insane because that buff, 40% damage buff, this thing is already so, so good. I am cautiously optimistic this will be the best exotic in the game. We'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. So definitely worth having that on. And then the Cartesian Coordinate, we got that lead from gold, Vorpal Roll. They did give a giant buff to fusions. Fusions are nasty. You know, we are in a fusion season where we're using particle deconstruction and that's going to be gone. But don't let that confuse you and think that fusions are bad by any measure, right? Confu uh, fusions are really, really good. Definitely worth having this Cartesian coordinate on your character. And this is a role that was given out, I believe, by Banshee or Zur, I can't remember. And then this Wolf Tone Draw. This is a terrible role of the Wolf Tone Draw. But definitely having a Wolf Tone Draw on there because this will be uh, for anti-champion mods again. So keep that in mind. Um, the Wolf Tone on the character. Moving on to the power ammo slot now. We've got the Reed's Regret. Um, I believe it was anti. I believe it was uh, unstoppable for the bow. Uh, Reads forget we have the triple tap firing line roll. I don't have that adept version. I wish, but triple tap firing line definitely really strong. Extremely good damage output right now. The damage output from in the witch queen will also be really good even without particle deconstruction. So keep that in mind. The Reads forget will be really nasty. Triple tap giving you free magic ammo as well. Um, firing line like one of the best damage buffs you could possibly get. This is going to be such a good weapon. There's so much utility from this. Um, definitely worth keeping the Reed's Regret on. The other half, it's basically just an Eager Edge sword. I do like that I have Surrounded on it. I got Surrounded Spec as well, so if I do have to kill some ads with it, it's not half bad, but it's certainly not, you know, the goal is to run around hitting people with the sword. We're just going to be flying around, skating around, getting from one activity to another as fast as possible, right? And then the Galhorn. The Galhorn is nasty, and I will definitely have the Galhorn on from time to time. So I'll put on something like this, for example. There we have it. This will be a potential build that I would use as I go through uh, the Witch Queen on day one. And I want to have all these different weapons because you never know what every activity can throw at you. Maybe you need to break solar shields. Maybe you need to break arc shields. Who knows what you need to, to fight off, right? And if you do need to fight certain shields, you know, you, the nice part is you've got every shield covered with Arbalist. So you got all kinds of options in here and so many different uh, builds that can be made with these weapons. And let me know down below which weapons you'll be taking in. Hopefully you found this video helpful because um, I did put a lot of effort and time into thinking about I looked through my entire vault I talked to some of my friends looked through all the exotic collections and then I waded in with all the changes coming from the recent TWAB and if there's more changes to the TWAB then obviously my opinion will change but largely the majority of these things that I mentioned are definitely worth having at the very least an Arbalist this Ignition Code the Wither Horde and the Succession those are like four guaranteed you should have those on the Stochastic Variable for sure the the summoner yes the cartesian and the trinity ghoul for sure can have those on definitely need all three of these these are going to be essentials for uh, the witch queen in my opinion and then of course like i said whenever you get a new weapon you're going to try that and use that stuff and have fun whenever you can maybe rocking a glaive as much as possible but when it matters i can almost be willing to bet i can almost guarantee you that you're going to need a lot of these weapons to beat that challenging activity those challenging activities in the witch queen so that's a wrap on this video though Make sure to subscribe if you did find this video helpful. Smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.